talking to me? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me about flipping houses? Because that's what I'm talking to you about, baby. I'm excited, folks. We're talking about flipping houses, like this particular house. Man, I got a client, sent it to me. He's like, hey, man, is this going to be a good flip? Am I going to make some money here? And I'm here to let him know if he's going to make some money, if he's not going to make some money, and if he could do the flip, my team on the ground, they're going to do the whole thing for him. Let's get all up in this thing right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Your boy Jay Wise here. If you've never watched Holden Wise TV, you should subscribe. Because the more people that subscribe to Holden Wise, the more money I make. And I, I'm struggling. My children only have one butler, folks. How can they live with only one butler? They're good kids. They're just like your kids. The house help helps them put their pants on one leg at a time, people. Help us out. Sweet Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> in all seriousness, though, uh, this house right here, right? My client, Mark, he's from Minneapolis. You said this to me, brother. You're like, hey, man, is this going to be a good flip, okay? And I'm here to help you, right? Because, folks, if you got a flip you're trying to do, I could run the numbers. I could tell you, uh, you know, what it's looking like, right? I could help you anywhere in the USA, really. Uh, but if you want to flip houses in the Cleveland market, we can go one step further, and I could actually have my team do the rehab. We've uh, got the largest scattered site rental portfolio of its kind in our market. Uh, I've sold $200 million worth of real estate. I know what I'm doing. Also, I lied. I don't, I don't actually I don't have butlers. That, that would be weird. Also, I definitely wouldn't have my butlers helping my kids put their pants on. That would be, like, super weird. But uh, my kids are super young. My kid, my son, he's, like, two. My daughter, she's one. She's actually already better at putting her pants on than my son. She's smart, man. Him, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Anyway, anyway. Moral of the story, though, folks. As I'm here to help you flip houses, I'm just a regular guy like you. But I happen to have done this many, 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 many times over. All right. So, Mark, this particular property, 6035 Barton Road, North Olmsted, 44070. It's been on the market almost 50 days, almost two months. Priced at 139 dollars 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 Now, first thing you got to look at when you're trying to flip a house, neighborhood, right? If we're in the Cleveland market, I graded all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale for you, folks. I help make things easy. Google that. It's in the notes below. It's also on the Tools and Resources tab at HoltonWise.com. A to F, like school, okay? F neighborhoods, super high risk, super crime, a uh, lot of renters versus owner occupants. A is all the way on the other end of the spectrum, super low risk. Super low crime. Most of the people that live there are owner-occupants versus renters. And, you know, obviously in the middle. You know, get what I'm saying? Doesn't mean A is necessarily good. F is bad. I hate when people say is this good or bad, right? That doesn't make sense because I do a lot of stuff in real estate. When I flip houses, I like to be in A neighborhoods. I think the house flipping strategy makes the most sense in A neighborhoods because you have the highest ARV, the biggest ceiling, the biggest spread. However, I think long-term rentals fucking suck in A neighborhoods because the price points are not dri driven uh, by cash-on-cash -cash returns or price-to-rent ratios. You can never cash flow in these neighborhoods. So when I do my rentals, the majority of my rentals are in C and D neighborhoods. I like those the best. I like the ability to go cash tenants, Section 8 tenants, things of that nature, right? So I hate when people are like, yo, this is a good neighborhood. This is a bad neighborhood. Dude, so I gave it a letter grade. What's your risk tolerance? What's your pain tolerance? What are you trying to do? What's your strategy, okay? And then you got to fit it in there. Uh, but for flips, which is what we're doing today, this is what Mark wants to do, right? For flips, Mark picked a good neighborhood. It's like a neighborhood, really. Uh, you had another one in Strongsville very similar to this one. That would be like a higher quality neighborhood. Like if we're like cutting hairs here, this would be like B plus, A minus. Like uh, 
the housing prices in North Olmsted are going to be a little lower than Strongsville. Uh, the median income is going to be a little lower, but still very, very good. So another flip you identified. You're on the right target here uh, in regards to the neighborhood. So I like these neighborhoods. So the, you're in the right spot, right? You picked out in the past. You sent me some other deals in the past where, like, I think the biggest issue – uh, was was you're in the wrong neighborhoods. Uh, now you, you're you're targeting the right neighborhoods now. North Olmsted, Strongsville, great neighborhoods, and this house is all sorts of jacked up, which makes sense, right? That's what you need. You need a jacked up house to be uh, a good flip. Uh, will this one be a good flip though? No, I don't think so. I yeah, uh, I don't like this one. I hate this one actually. Um, it, this is very similar to the the last one you sent me. It's it's weird. It's different. It's an outlier, right? You want cookie cutter when you're flipping houses, especially when you're flipping houses from many states away. Uh, you've never flipped a house before. You've never flipped a house in this market, right? So with anything, um, it's all about risk reward, okay, and your probability of return of investment um, versus focusing on return on investment, right? Return on investment, that's great. That's the icing on the cake, dog. But you know what is way more important? Return of investment. You don't want to fucking lose money. And when you start to look at outliers, weirdo properties, weird redheaded stepchild, so to speak, right? Like, you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to try to buy something that's out of the norm of the neighborhood, right? And this one very much is. Like, it's way older than a lot of the housing stock. Uh, it, it, it's like... It, it, it's it's smaller. Uh, obviously, it had some major issues in the house. It's on a big old main road. Like, it's not cool, right? And, and this is where you guys could really get into trouble, okay? Like, people will run comps, right? People always run their comps. They run their quarter-mile comps for six months, right? So you're running comps for this fucking house, but then you're getting comps up in here in this little development, right? Like, this... This development, these cul-de-sacs, these are what people want in this particular area, right? This is the type of properties that people are searching for, uh, that your your families, your target buyers are searching for when they move into these neighborhoods, right? So this street, right? Like, this is the ideal street that you want, right? Like, if you're going to do a flip in this neighborhood, you see these houses, you want to find one of these some bitches, uh, or like Granny lived there since it was built, and then she croaks. Sorry, Granny, R.I.P. Uh, and you know she still got the little old lady stuff in the house, and then you could update it. Like that is what you want, right? Think like suburbia, right? Husband, wife, two point five kids, dog, white picket fence. Although admittedly there are no white picket fences here, uh, but like. You got to appeal to, like, the cookie-cutter stuff, right? So what buyers will do, especially when they're new to the house flipping business or they're new to the market, they will just pull their comps, right, because everybody tells you, hey, man, quarter mile radius, uh, last six months. But it's like a different world when you look at these houses, right, compared to, like, you know, this thing right here on the main road doesn't have the neighborhood feel. Doesn't have the square footage of those houses. It's like, who going to buy this, right? It's like super cheap when you compare it to the uh, cost of other properties in the area. But look, it's been on the market almost two months. It hasn't sold. It's 2022, dude. There is a freaking housing shortage <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. So anything reasonable is getting scooped up. And anything, especially like a flip property where there could be money made, if it was to where there's actually money to be made, would have been scooped up within hours of being listed. So that right there should tell you this one's a dud because that's it. This one's a dud. There is nothing that we could do to this property uh, in a reasonable time frame uh, with a reasonable certainty that would be a good investment of your capital, of your resources, uh, because it's all about return on investment before return or return of investment before return on investment. And this is just an outlier. The moral of the story, you don't want outliers. You want the norm. This neighborhood, you want to be on that cul-de-sac. That's what people are looking for in this neighborhood. This is a one-off. Don't try to flip one-offs. It's like on the inside, right? On the inside, when we paint 
the inside. Do you know what we do? We use neutral tones. We use the most popular tones. Where do we figure out what the most popular tones is? Do I go, hey, honey, talk to my wife, like, what's your favorite color? Or do I pick my favorite color? No, we don't do that. Because that doesn't make sense. Because what my favorite color and what my wife's favorite color is, is irrelevant. Who gives a crap what we like? What we do is see what is being sold the most. We talk to our paint suppliers. Like, yeah, what's the most popular SKU this year? They tell us, boom, guess what? That's the SKU we use. You don't get all creative like, oh, we're going to do a feature wall. No, because that is niche. That is specific. That will appeal to a couple people but turn a lot of people off. You don't need to try to hit a super grand slam home run for like one person, you need to give something that everybody can kind of be like, yeah, all right, this is cool. And then they can kind of put their finishing touches on it a little bit later, right? You got to appeal to the masses, right? That's the thing. Appeal to the masses. Never buy a one-off that's not going to appeal to the masses. There ain't no such thing as a successful out-of-state niche flipper. Don't make no sense. Don't be that guy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.